আসসালামু আলাইকুম হোপ ইউ আর ডুইং ভেরি ওয়েল বাই দ্য গ্রেস অফ অলমাইটি টুডে উইল স্টার্ট এ ক্লাস ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ক্লাস অন পোস্ট পার্টাম হেমোরেজ বিকজ ইটস ভেরি মাচ কনসার্ন অ্যাবাউট দ্য ম্যাটারনাল ডেথ নট অনলি ইন আওয়ার কান্ট্রি বাট ওয়ার্ল্ড ওয়াইড অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম ইট ইজ ভেরি মাচ ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফর ইউর এক্সাম so i hope you will very carefully notice the class and observe the class before going to the main classes i want to share some introduction with you why pph is so much concerned who are why we are so much worried about the postpartum hemorrhage hemorrhage accounts about 26% of the maternal death in bangladesh among this we can divide in first trimester bleeding or first half of the pregnancy and that time the hemorrhage is either due to abortion or ectopic pregnancy or hydatiform mole the advanced stage of the pregnancy that is after 28 weeks the main cause of the hemorrhage is antepartum hemorrhage the cause is either placenta previa or abruptio placenta in the previous class we has already discussed about the antepartum hemorrhage and the third that is the postpartum hemorrhage so that we can divide this hemorrhage in the three class and among these the postpartum hemorrhage is having again the leading and it is the leading cause of maternal death not only in bangladesh but worldwide and the interesting thing is that the most of the postpartum hemorrhage happened within first 24 hours after the delivery first 24 hours after the delivery and it is a very crucial time for a woman and this postpartum hemorrhage it is preventable or you can uh, enhance your service you can prevent this death from the postpartum hemorrhage in many of the cases it should be remembered that we have some prediction for the postpartum hemorrhage who are the client who may develop the postpartum hemorrhage but anybody any mother can develop the postpartum hemorrhage so we should be strict vigilance for each and every delivery and we should try to prevent the postpartum hemorrhage and we have to be arrange a very systemic way how we can manage this postpartum hemorrhage I think you will know all know about the golden minute of the neonatal resuscitation. In case of postpartum hemorrhage, the another thing is that golden hour. So it is a new concept about the postpartum hemorrhage. This is the golden hour. That means first one hour after delivery of the baby. And in the stages of the labor, we mentioned it as fourth stage of the labor. so it is very important to monitor this patient during this time if you can diagnose the postpartum hemorrhage and you can start the management of the postpartum hemorrhage within 1 hour of the initiation of the postpartum hemorrhage the chance of survival of the patient will highly increase so we are asking at or we are name we are giving the name of this time is as the golden hour you have received the patient and you will start your management within one hour but unfortunately diagnosis of postpartum hemorrhage is often delayed or it is undiagnosed or it is underestimate that is delayed delayed means the patient has started the postpartum hemorrhage but nobody is concerned about the mother they are very happy with the baby they are happy very, very happy with the uh, baby there and the mother is just lying on the bed huh? but there is excessive bleeding is nobody is concerned about it nobody is checking what is the amount of the bleeding so often there is a delay in the diagnosis the next thing is that it is often underestimated why most of the people are thinking that it is bleeding it should be bleeding it 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 will be happened but the amount of bleeding it is very difficult to measure because there is no measurement cup or there is no measurement scale for this 
they are using the napkins they are using the pads sanitary pads and they are using the cloths in the home but how can they estimate this the cloth is soaked with how much amount of blood they cannot estimate that so there is a delay in the uh, diagnosis at the same time it is often underestimated in the labor world or not only labor world uh, when there is a uh, shock due to hemorrhage we are always concerned about the blood pressure in the previous class i have discussed in the class that hypotension it is a feature of the shock but remember it's a very late sign when there is a hypotension or decreasing in the blood pressure not, not, it, and it is noticeable by this time patient has lost 25 to 30 percent of the blood volume so the, you just think about that during pregnancy there is a expansion of the plasma volume and the blood volume and if a woman is bearing six liter of blood during the non-pregnant state this blood may be 7.5 liter now but 25 to 30 percent blood already lost then the patient will develop the hypertension so you should not wait for the development of the hypertension so this is so we are concerned about the postpartum hemorrhage we are very much worried about the postpartum hemorrhage now we are actually going to the, our main class before going to the class before starting the management of the postpartum hemorrhage we should know about the definition every time we have start to our class with the definition so what is the define define any amount of blood from vital tract following birth of the baby up to the end of the puerperium which adversely affect the health of the mother and which is evident by the rising of the pulse rate falling of the blood pressure and the then it is called the postpartum hemorrhage it is a very practical definition because we are measuring the effect of the loss of the blood loss there is blood loss the blood pressure is rising blood pressure is, uh, uh, pulse is rising tachycardia to cope up this loss or due to maintain the perfusion to the and there is falling of the blood pressure so it is a very practical definition and you have to know very well it is if you just consider about the amount of blood loss in case of vaginal delivery if the amount of blood loss is more than 500 ml or 500 cc then we call it is postpartum hemorrhage and in case of cesarean section the amount of loss is more and it is about one liter so we should define it two way but among these two definitions the first definition is more practical because i already told you that it is very difficult to measure now what is the cause of this hemorrhage we are starting with the four t four t's t's we will discuss about the four t so first t t means tone tone that is contracting power of the uterus and you know in the third stage of the labor after for delivery of the placenta and after delivery of the placenta to control the hemorrhage in the third stage of the labor you trust to have a very good tone you have to maintain the tone and we have already said that there is a crisscross manner arrangement of the muscular of the uterine wall which causes leaving ligature of the vessels so this tone is very much important so in which cases this tone is hampered just think about this the tone is hampered in case of grand multipara multiple pregnancy then fetal macrosomia over distension of the uterus like twin over distension polyhydramnios or fetal macrosomia so what happened that there is over distension of the uterus and after deliver the placenta uterus cannot contract like as well first thing another thing is that the uterus muscle may be tired when they will become tired if there is an abnormal uterine contraction such as lies prolonged labor obstructed labor injudicious administration of the oxytocin and mismanagement of the third stage of the labor in these cases the uterus muscle cannot contract well 
so there is a bleeding there is open of the sinuses maternal sinuses and there is a bleeding and bleeding so first cause is the tone and it accounts about 75 percent of the pph first the second second t it means tear 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 means any injury in the genital tract or it may be trauma so you can call it as a tear or it may be trauma and it accounts about 20 percent of the postpartum hemorrhage so there is a every chance of injury in the genital tract the common genital tract injury uh, we can see it in the cervical tear or maybe visceral tear or maybe perineal tear there is a chance of extension of the epistotomy tear and in case of instrumental delivery like forceps or ventos or manual uh, handling the, in that cases there is a also chance of the tear so we should remember this third set the third one that is tissue tissue means some tissue is retained within the uterine cavity so what is the common tissues common sheet to placenta so there may be missing cotyledon or there may be chance of miss any membrane which may cause the hampers the contraction of the uterus so there is a chance of hemorrhage another thing is that the previous classes we have discussed about the placenta accretus spectrum that is morbid adherent placenta which is responsible for this and there is a chance of retained of the placenta there is a chance of partial retention of the placenta missing of the cotyledons placenta bilobed one lobe is missed so these are the tissues which may hamper the contraction and finally even blood clot sometimes the clotted blood organized blooded clot it may hamper the blood contra uterine contraction so there is a role of masses masses just after in the component of the third stage we have uh, management of the third stage we told this masses the uterus so that if there is a missing cotyledon or tissue or blood clot it will be expelled out which help in the contraction of the uterus so this percentage is about five percent last of all that is the thrombin 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 it is just uh, to remember the t's we are using the term thrombin but this basically this is related to the coagulation factor or the coagulation procedure in case of the uh, delivery and in case of the third stage of the labor so in obstetrics in very unique there are some coagulation deficiency and we can just remember what are the uh, factors which may hamper this coagulation it is very evident in case of preeclampsia in case of eclampsia and help syndrome remember help syndrome where the coagulation property is decrease in preeclampsia and eclampsia there is another uh, cause of the coagulation failure this is the disseminated intervascular coagulation and this type of disseminated intervascular coagulation is very much uh, evident in case of abruptio placenta and after delivery of the intrauterine fetal death. So, in case of obstetrics, it is very unique, and many of the mothers are suffering from this coagulation failure. So, these are the cause of the four T's, and we should remember about the four T's. And when we are managing the case, we should address all the T's. So, tone, tear or trauma, tissue, and thrombin. Classification of the PPH, if we go. One classification is that it may be primary PPH, it, it happens within the first 24 hours. But from the first 24 hours up to the end of the PPDM, it is called the secondary postpartum hemorrhage. But we are more using the classification according to the severity of the disease, that is, according to the severity of the blood loss. According to the severity, we can divide it into three classes. 
and this is the RCUC classification that is Royal College of Obstetric and Gynecological classification which includes there may be minor, minor means minimum blood loss. So, it is more than 500 to 1 liter, but it is less than uh, 1, uh, 1 1.5 liter, less than 1.5 liter. In that case, the patient will, the bleeding, there is a bleeding, but the bleeding is somehow excessive. You are seeing that there is excessive frequent changing of the pads or there is a uh, uh, soaking of the clothings of the patient. So, you can estimate this is the bleeding. What is the clinical feature in this stage? Nothing. There is a no hemodynamic change. Patient will show no rising of the pulse rate or decrease in the blood pressure. Why? This is the defense mechanism of almighty. Because we have already mentioned that during pregnancy, there is a volume expansion, expansion up to 20 to 40 percent. So, the blood volume is excess in case of delivery at the term. So, this patient can withstand this amount of blood loss. If a non, we, we assess one liter blood loss in a non-pregnant lady, of course, obviously, she will show some symptoms. But fortunately, due to this volume expansion, this, this patient after delivery, though the blood loss is more than 500 or 1 liter, but the patient will know, does not show any symptoms. How can you manage this? Just volume replacement and eutotonic drugs because the tone, we have to increase the tone, you will give in the eutotonic drugs. So, that is really enough, but it depends whether when you are diagnosis, if it is delay, the amount of loss will be huge. So, this is the minor variety. Then major, no moderate, minor and major. Major and the blood loss is 1 liter to 2 liter. Now, the patient already lost 20 to 25 percent of the blood volume from her body. So, this patient will sh show some symptoms that is tachycardia, in case respiratory rate, then decreased blood pressure and level of consciousness somehow drowsy and finally there is oligouria that is urine output will be decreased the, which indicates that renal perfusion is already hampered. So, how can we manage this case? This case is should be managed very energetically and very authentic we should start our management. This is the meso and last that is that is severe and when the blood loss is more than 2 liter by this time 30 to 35 percent of the blood loss of the woman lost blood is lost by this time and the patient will be in profound shock and this patient is very critical and this patient needs a crit critical management and at the same time massive blood transfusion. So, this is the class definition, classification and the cause. Now, we will discuss about the how can we prevent the PPH. So, this is a time. Prevention is better than cure. So, we have to prevent the postpartum hemorrhage. So, how? First, it should be start from the antenatal period and in the antenatal period, we should identify the high risk factors who may develop the postpartum hemorrhage such as grand multipara or multiple pregnancy or macrosomia, polyhydramnios or placenta previa. These cases they may develop postpartum hemorrhage. Sometimes there may be uterine fibroid which also hampers the contraction of the uterus. So, in these cases, we will always prepare ourselves for the postpartum hemorrhage. And also in the prolonged labor, obstructed labor and the antipartum hemorrhage, we mentioned that we have to keep our blood in our hand before delivery. So, these are the factors we can identify. But again, I want to mention that nobody is immune for development of the 
PPH. Anybody, anytime can develop PPH. So each and every patient you have to be counseling. You should know in the antenatal period what is the blood group of the patient. And we are always just asking, yes, your blood group is B positive. You have two arrange one or two donor because anytime there may be chance of postpartum hemorrhage and we should be ready for that. The second thing is that each and every pregnant woman should have iron and folic acid supplementation because elementary iron and folic acid is not sufficient for the anemia. So we have to supplement each and every. We have to correct the anemia before delivery. And this is a very challenge for an obstetrician during the antenatal checkup because it, no pregnant lady should go to the liver when the hemoglobin percentage is less than 10 gram per liter. So you should, you can treat the anemia either elemental iron or maybe injectable iron or maybe blood transfusion, but you should. Then train stuff in the labor room, you know, there is a room set up, there is a labor room, there is a standard labor room protocol and a labor room should be very organized. There should be sufficient space, sufficient light, oxygen supply, instruments, all the logistics. Nearby there should be a blood bank, there should be uh, uh, any, oh, sorry, uh, there should be cesarean section uh, OT, that is the labor OT and ICU facilities. So a labor room should be arranged like that, all the logistics, all the uh, uh, systems, all the uh, necessary equipments is available here. Then staffs, in the labor room usually the staffs are specially trained and they are working in the labor room and they are especially the sisters, even ayahs, they are know how to manage the postpartum hemorrhage, how to respond to the postpartum hemorrhage. And most of the time we are taking some workshops or drilling, we may take, we may train up them, the how you will respond to the emergency and what will be the action of you during an emergency. Then another thing is that AMTSL active management of the third stage of the labor. So oxytocin, control contraction and finally uterine masses. So you can prevent the postpartum memories about 70 to 80 percent. Labor ward preparedness. Labor ward preparedness includes you should have a PPH kit in your hands and it should be two kit. One kit it will be the such as a patient is in shock. So you have to channel your open first. So there should be saline, there will be saline set, IV cannula, then how will you fix your cannula? Then oxytocin drugs and all the logistics should be present within the one box. So there is a box and that is written here, this is a PPH kit. So this is the PPH box. It is written here another box or that is the instrument trolley and this is instrument trolley is prepared by the nursing staff within the labor room that is the trolley at the tray they will prepare a tray for the PPH management so this is the labor ward preparedness and finally we are talking about a tertiary care hospital but all the patients are not within the tertiary care hospital so in any center where there they, that is such as in Upujala Health Complex, you should know how, what, up to what level you can manage this patient and you should know when you should refer to the patient to the higher center. And most of the time after management of the PPH for volume replacement or for blood, we have to refer to the patient to the higher center. So this is the prevention. Now diagnosis. It may be very easy to say there is a bleeding, so it is PPH. It is there is no difficulty in diagnosis. But I have already mentioned that there is a chance of delay in the diagnosis. So we should be very vigilant. And in the labor ward, we use a chart, mu chart, M E O W mu chart, M E O W. So this chart it is called that modified early obstetric 
modified early obstetric warning system warning system modified early obstetric warning system your chart and if we can maintain this chart in the labor room you can diagnose the pph very early and sometime most of the time we are diagnosed by the amount of pads soaked or it may be it may be by clothing how many clothes are soaked with blood by can we can measure the blood and finally clinical examination that is again temperature skin condition pallorness pulse blood pressure tone of the uterus and finally urinary output it is most important to early diagnosis prompt respondents and very energetic management to save the life of the patient so we are just start to go into the management of the postpartum hemorrhage we are just divide in some steps first step step 1 step 1 step 1 it is the initial stage or it may be general management you may call it general management first thing shout for help you cannot do it alone so shout for help yes there is a patient with ppas the patient is in shock just come sharp then start oxygen but before giving the oxygen you should see whether the airway is patent or not and high flow oxygen if the patient is taking respiration but the respiration rate is high will start the high flow oxygen about 6 to 8 liter per minute open to iv cannula by white bore cannula so what is the number of the cannula we are using 18g 18g the color is green 18g the color is green usually the different uh, sizes by different color so 18g is green then 20g it is a uh, pink color and there is also 16g that is ash color but in 16g is not available in our country but we are using the 18g and we are always asking our sisters just never to open a channel we are never open a channel without 18g in case of labor word so two iv cannula and why when you are giving the cannula or somebody is giving open the cannula she or he will just uh, take some sample of the blood for grouping and cross matching and ask the patient to arrange blood at least three unit koy bag blood ante hobe patient jiggish koreche at least three unit because we know that by this time the patient has lost about 1 to 2 liter of the blood so for volume replacement you should arrange at least three unit of blood by this time you also ask the patient to do some investigations like complete blood picture or coagulation profile also we can ask for this then we'll just go for the just gentle palpation of the abdomen what is the tone of the what is the tone of the uterus if we will most of the time we will found that the uterus is relaxed it has legs relaxed soft so there is a bleeding because it 75% of the cause of this bleeding is due to the atonicity and another thing is that there may be chance of the retention of the urine and the bladder you may full it may be full so you should start straight go to the pervisional examination and put a catheter first this catheter will just help two way to you will just it will evacuate the bladder so it helps to contact the uterus it helps to massage the uterus and you will put the catheter so that you can measure the out urinary output so put a catheter then we will give the masses first is the masses 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 will help to stimulate the contraction at the same time it will help to expel this product if there if any tissue within the uterine cavity especially blood clot there may be no placental tissue but clotted blood is hampering the contraction of the uterus you will giving the masses and there is contraction of the uterus then volume replacement so by for which fluid you will start the channel we will start with crystalloid solution and that is the hartman solution 
and will give it very rapidly by volume replacement. At least 2 liter of the isotonic solution or, crystal or crystalloid we will give it and we will ask them to collect the blood and before collecting the blood or before receiving the blood in hands you have given already 2 to 2.5 liter of the crystalloid solution then you can add the colloid but usually we try to avoid the colloid because there may be some source of the blood reaction when you are giving the um, blood there may be some problem especially there may be chance of the disseminated intravascular coagulation so it will further adversely affect the health of the mother so it is better to be within the crystalloid and then to the blood then uterotonic drugs uterotonic drugs because the fluid will not give the fluid alone all who have to stimulate the contraction by the eutotonic drugs. So, we have to be very clear conception about the eutotonic drugs. First line, first line drugs is the oxytocin, oxytocin. So, how will you give it? We will give it in drip that is we will give 1 liter of Hartman solution plus 20 to 40 unit of oxytocin. 20 to 40 international unit of oxytocin you will start and you will giving this fluid within very rapid within 40 to 60 drops per minute you are giving so it will stimulate your contraction the advantage of this that oxytocin it is a very physiological very towards physiological so there is a contraction of the uterus without some major side effects but if you give this oxytocin in the bolus form there is a chance of hypotension so we are avoiding in the bolus form we are giving in the drip it is better how many ample of oxytocin or how many unit of oxytocin you can give in a day not more than 100 not more than 100 unit so we should keep in one day or we can just suggest that we can use three liter three liter of fluid it will cover less than 100 international unit because if you give excessive oxytocin then it may causes water intoxication so oxytocin is the first line defense for the postpartum hemorrhage we will start whenever you are giving the opening the channel just you are giving 20 to 40 unit of oxytocin in one liter and you are just running and you are massaging and I think most of the postpartum hemorrhage, 90 to 95 percent of the postpartum hemorrhage responds to this. If oxytocin is not enough, you are not happy with the contraction, then you can go for the second line. What is the second line? Argumentary. Argumentary. We have ample of argumentary containing 0 0.2 milligram per ml this type so I am giving the argumentin either IM or IV if then again you are messaging we are giving one ample IM or IV that is 0.2 milligram and you are again messaging if it is desired contraction no dose further just maintain the oxytocin drip but still there is lack of contraction or the uterus is flabby you can add after 15 minutes you can add 15 minutes another ample and then you can continue it up to 4 hourly but remember in one day we cannot give more than 1 gram that is 5 ample 5 ample mane amra dine amra ekta 24 ghontar moddhe amra 5 ample er beshi dite parbo na argumentin the adverse effect of the argumentin is like that there is a chance of tonic contraction and there is a chance of vomiting, so severe headache and it is contraindicated in case of severe preeclampsia or in case of heart disease. So it should be not, it should not use in that cases. So the second line is the argumentin. The third line, in the third line we are using the prostaglandin, prostaglandin and we have very unique prostaglandin in our hand that is a misoprostol and we are giving misoprostol about 600 to 1000 that is 600 to 1000 
So each of the tablet is containing 200 microgram of the misoprostol. So I can use three or four or five misoprostol at a time. There are different routes. We can give some good sublingually. We can just orally swallow the patient or it, we can give it in par rectally. But we don't use it par vaginally because there is a huge bleeding and you are giving the misoprostol here. It will be just expelled out. We will not get the benefit. What is the disadvantage of prostaglandin or misoprostol? There is a chance of vomiting and hyperpyrexia. So hyperpyrexia, you are giving prostaglandin and after one hour the patient is developing fever like 105. So oxytocin drugs, oxytocin, argumentin, prostaglandin. Will you use all drugs simultaneously? No, one by one. Oxytocin, it is, you, there is no desired contraction, go for the argumentin. Argumentin, no desired contact for the, for the prostaglandin. So one by one. Last one drug we should mention that is the tranexamic acid. Tranexamic acid. So tranexamic acid, you know that it helps to coagulate. So it will help the coagulate, especially if there is an injury or any small vessel open that will coagulate that vessels and help for the uh, uh, stopping of the bleeding. So it is not the eutotronic drugs. So these three are eutotronic drugs and this is the for the coagulation. So this is the drug and dose and how much what are the adverse effect. So you have given all, you have given the general management, you are giving the uh, oxytocin, drip, you have put a catheter and you are giving the masses. But still there is no, the bleeding is going on. In that cases, we have to vary vigilance this time because we will continue this treatment and by this time we will get our blood in hand and we will start the transfusion. So what are the blood and blood products we are using? We are giving blood, whole blood, fresh blood. And the problem is that most of the time when we are patient asking the patient to uh, arrange the blood, they are going to the blood bank and sometimes they are just collecting the blood which is stored for uh, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks like that. So this hemoglobin may be, there may be hemoglobin which has the oxygen carrying capacity, but the problem is that they have very minimum platelets because you know the lifespan of the platelet and another thing is that their coagulation factors will be absent here. So this blood will not help you do for coagulation. So we are asking them please collect the fresh blood, fresh blood from your donor relatives and sometimes most of the times your students you know medical students and doctors and the staffs are giving the most of the most of the blood requirement of the blood is fulfilled by Shandhani medicine club and various donors club you know it very well. So we can give the blood transfusion. But after transfusion of the four unit of blood, still the blood patient is continuing. That time we should go for the fresh frozen plasma. Why? In the whole blood, there is a hemoglobin, there is white cell and there is the platelet. And there is also serum containing the coagulation factors. But after transfusion of the four unit of the blood, there is a huge amount of the hemoglobin. There is a rising of the human hemoglobin. There is a huge oxygen carrying capacity. In that cases, if you give the more fresh blood, it will cause the polycythemia at the same time hypercoagulable state of the by effects of the polycythemia. In that cases, it is better to give the fresh frozen plasma we are requiring the fibrinogen and very specifically we can give the fibrinogen. So in that cases, especially in case of disseminated intervascular coagulation, blood products is very helpful because there may be chance of overload of the blood and there is a chance of overload or overload of the cell. Cryoprecipitate for fibrinogen and the, you can also give the coagulation factors. Our target is to raise the hemoglobin level up to 10 gram. So then we will gradually replace the volume. But remember, during this volume replacement, 
we should avoid the overload because the heart is already in the compensated state and due to the overload of the fluid you are giving the fluid you are giving the 3 liter of fluid you are giving the colloid and then you transfuse the blood and the heart become exhausted and the patient develop heart failure and there is a failure of the lungs and there is the pulmonary edema and we lost the patient so be aware about the overhydration and the fluid volume overload so this is the first step then we are going to the second step step one so this is a general management in where we are giving the volume replacement we are giving the oxytocin drugs second step two step two it is the exploration of the uterus that is you are giving masses but still you are giving the all of the oxytocin drugs so still there is a bleeding so you should think about that there is a something maybe happened within the uterine cavity so this stage we will explore the uterus and we will explore by manually or by sponge holding forceps we will explore it at the same time we will explore the genital tract is there any injury to the cervix is there any any tear to the vagina tear to the vagina tear to the cervix or in the lower segment so exploration of the uterus and then we will usually we will do it in the our labor room with good light source you can do it well after exploration of the uterus you will still massaging to maintain the contraction still there is no contraction then you will go to the step 3 so tell what is step 2 step 2 is the exploration of the uterus to see whether there is any product blood product or retained product or placenta or any membrane within the uterine cavity at the same time you will explore the genital tract whether there is any tear there may be tear in the cervix there may be tear in the vagina there may be tear in the peritoneum perineum or there may be tear or there may be hematoma also so you will explore it then step 3 step 3 it is the bimanual compression so bimanual compression so this is an uterus vagina so we'll just put our hand we are put a right hand just introduce our hand here and just i will just put my hand in the anterior fornix cleansing hand so i put my hand in the anterior fornix and by left hand i will go to the posterior side of the uterus and by two hand in between the two hand i will give the masses this masses only abdominal but this masses is by manual so step 3 it grows up by manual masses and that time you will continue the oxytocin it should be continue still there is bleeding now it is a step 4 in the step 4 what is step 4 balloon tamponade or condom catheter ei jagah ta te boshe ami kintu amader professor saiba madam er naam na bolli noy ebong tumra jano je eta amader ei je ei method ta balloon condom catheter method ta kintu ekhon world wide accepted it is written in every books in every conference that is and this method is name as saiba's method professor saiba madam i am giving my gratitude to the madam because i have the opportunity as a direct student of her and i got the opportunity to be work with her so this method condom condom catheter we are telling that the what is the aim of this management aim this there is a bleeding কি হয় যদি আমাদের হাত কেটে যায় ব্লিড করছে আমরা কি করছি এটাকে কম্প্রেস করে দিচ্ছি চেপে ধরছি আমার এখানে হাত কেটে গেছে এটাকে চেপে ধরো চেপে ধরলে এই ব্লাডটা কিন্তু আস্তে 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 কগুলেশন হয়ে বন্ধ হয়ে যাবে কাজে ইনকেস অফ কন্ডম ক্যাথেটার মেথড কন্ডম ক্যাথেটার ইজ নট নট দ্য ইনিশিয়াল মেথড ইনিশিয়াল মেথড ইট ইজ দ্য বেলুন টেম্পোনেন্ট দ্যাট ইজ ইন দ্য ডেভেলপড কান্ট্রি দে আর ইউজিং সাম বেলুনস which is causes just fulfill the uterus and just compress the sinuses of the maternal sinus uterine sinus so there is no bleeding but this balloon tamponade it is very costly and not available in our country in that case the alternative method is the cyber's method where we are using 
in rubber catheter. So, this is a rubber catheter. So, a condom is attached here and that within the uterus it is introduced and it is inflated. Fully the holo. Kiri fulano holo pani. Pry tin shu take a shari tin shu sisi pani de juti amra take a balloon take amra de condom take the full condom it a capacity at say to inflate like this. Kaja amra 300 to 300 ottawa jatu juku mone hoi juti uterus bishi boro take the light to bishi ulak the pari. Tala mother eater. Aim to keep by the mechanism of action to look just make a compression to the open sinus. See, if you have a vessel, you can take a maternal sinus, you can take a bleeding. Then, if you have a compressed, you can take a compressed, you can take a compressed, you can take a condom catheter, you can take a condom catheter. ताले ए कंडोम कैथेटर टक इन्तु आमदे लेबर रूम में थक बे वो जी पीपीए किट्स बोले थे वो शुड एरेंज ऑल द ए राबर कैथेटर इवन कंडोम जस्ट जस्ट छुटा जेटा दे अमरा बाद बो कंडोम रा शेटा एंड नॉर्मल सालाइन अनदर चैनल इगले किन्तु तुम्हादे अपन थक तो अभी अपन पीपीए चे किट्टा � अमर तो अपने पीपीएच के टेज़ जमान आज के मानो करो तुम्हारी यूनिटेड आज के एडमिशन काजी तुम्ही जो कौन लेबर रूम में आज के ड्यूटी करते जाबे तुम्ही तुम्हारे साथ ये पीपीएच की इच्छा किंतु हाथे कुरी नहीं ढूँढ पे कारण आज के तके चुप बिछोंडा तुम्ही किंतु एकुन तके चुप बिछोंडा तु Still, the bleeding is coming. We are just giving the condom catheter and there is a soaking. Again, there is a soaking, the bleeding is gone. So, what do we do now? We have to shift our patient from the labor room to the operation theater. We have to do a conservative approach to the PPH management. So, what do we do? During this shifting, there is शिफ्ट दूरों को मोते पड़े। एक तो होते पड़े कि ये कौन? एक तो उपजला शास्त्र कॉम्प्लेक्स थे कि तुम्हें एक तो टार्शियर लेवल हॉस्पिटल है ये पेशेंट आके शिफ्ट कर चो। एवं तुमरा शुन अनेक ये बाय दिस टाइम जानो जे नॉन न्यूमिटिक एंटीशॉक गार्बेंटर को था। हमने छोभी वो देखे थे। ये तो जो दियो आमदे देशे अकनो अतो टेवल लेवल ना किचु टा आचे कोई किचु किचु जागे अकनो पाव जाए आस्ते से यूज़ शुरू हुए चे बट डेवलप्ड कंट्री से उड़ा की कोचे जोकन एरो को बाटे पेशेंट होचे तारा एरो को भावे जे जागे टाटे रेफरल जोकन कोर्बे तारा इटे दीचे इटे दवार कारणे पेशेंट किंतु शौके � in our hospital, our labor room is in the third floor and the operation theater is the fourth floor. Amra to akun jithi patient shift korte chai, ehi shumoy amra jeta kori, there is a scope for the aortic compression. Aortic compression. Aortic compression, just we know the surface marking of the abnormal aorta. So this is the vertebra umbilicus. Just umbilicus से तो कि एक तो ऊपर एवं बाम दिखे जो दिया हमरा चाहे ताहले किन्तु इलाम हमरे abdominal aorta टक feel कोरी। हमरे एक तो obese patient होले एक feel कोरते पारी ना but lean and thin patient होले power जाए। आये तो शुभिता जेटो होले during pregnancy तार abdomen टा ओने relax थके। Uterus टा शोरे जाओ कारणे हमरा किन्तु कुब easily किन्तु आमदर ये इटा abdominal aorta टा power जेते पारे। तो abdominal aorta जोखन compression कोरबो हमरा just एक मुश्ती एवं ये टा कंप्रेस करे रखले क्या होगे? आमदे इट्रोन सर्कुलेशन टा के आम्रा कुमी दिते पार बो। एंड ए जे कंप्रेशन टा एतो सफिसिएंट होते होगे एवं विल जस्ट विल फील द फीमरल पल्सेशन। दुमी जिति देखो जे तुमी ये टा कंप्रेस करे चो एवं फीमरल पल्सेशन नहीं ताले तुमी बुझते पार बचे सफिसिएंट कंप्रेशन � प्रकृतिर कास्ट के किचु शोमाय कीने ना हो जाते तुम्हें ओटी दे तुम्हारे एनर्जमेंट टा तोरी करते पारो। So we are going for the operation theatre. Now we are starting the step five. That is the steps of the surgical management. Step five is the surgical management. In case of surgical management, we are dividing again into the two types. Either it is conservative surgery or it may be hysterectomy. So, what are the conservative surgeries? Conservative surgery, when we say that, we have to do 
এটা ইউট্রাসটা ওপেন করব অ্যাবডোমেন ওপেন করব এবং ইউট্রাসে ভেরিয়াস টাইপস অফ দ্য স্ট্রেস সুচার স্ট্রেস সুচার মানে হলো একটা জিনিস মনে করো একটা এরকম একটা মাছটাকে এরকম চাপ দিয়ে ধরে রাখার জন্য আমরা যে সুচার স্লো ইউজ করি তার মধ্যে খুব কমন স্ট্রেস সুচার একটা আছে বিলিঞ্চ সুচার তাছাড়া আছে ফিগার ওভ এইট স্কোয়ার সুচার অথবা সার্ভিক্স অনেক সময় দেখা যাচ্ছে যে তোমার স্পেশালি যদি অ্যান্টি মানে এপিএইচের জন্য ব্লিডিং হয় লোয়ার সেগমেন্টে এই সার্ভিক্সের এই জায়গা থেকে খুব ব্লিড করে তখন আমরা এটাকে এই সার্ভিক্সের চারিদিকে সার্কুলার করে করে এরকম করে ছোট 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 করে আলাদা করে বাইট দিতে পারি সো স্ট্রেস সুচার এটা আমরা দিতে পারি তাহলে উই আর গিভিং ভেরিয়াস সোর্স অফ স্ট্রেস সুচার এমন দেন এ ভেরি পপুলার নেম ইজ দ্য বি লিঞ্চ সুচার বি লিঞ্চ বাই দ্য নেম অফ দ্য প্রফেসর বি লিঞ্চ সেটা আমরা দিতে পারি এরপরে যেটা হতে পারে সেটা হলো ডি ভাস্কুলারাইজেশান মানে হলো আমাদের ইউট্রাসের যে ভেসেলগুলো সাপ্লাই দিচ্ছে তাদেরকে যদি আমরা লাইগেট করে দিই খুব কমনলি আমরা যেটা করি সেটা হলো বাইলেটাল ইউট্রান আর্টারি লাইগেশান কাজেই খুব এই যে আমাদের এখানে আমাদের আমরা জানি অ্যাট দ্য লেভেল অফ দ্য ইন্টারনাল অস ঠিক এই জায়গাটাতে আমাদের ইউট্রান আর্টারি বা ইউট্রান ভেসেলস থাকছে দুইটা তাহলে আমরা কি করতে পারি এই জায়গাটাতে এটাকে লাইগেট করে দিতে পারি দুই পাশে আমরা বাইলেটাল ইউট্রান আর্টারি লাইগে যদি লাইগেশন করে দিই তাহলে অ্যামাউন্ট অফ ব্লাড ফ্লো টু দ্য ইউট্রাস আমরা এটাকে কমিয়ে আনতে পারবো আর কি ধরনের করা যেতে পারে অনেক সময় দেখা যায় ইউট্রাসের এখান থেকে ওভারি থেকেও কিন্তু একে অ্যানাস্টোমেটিক ভেসেলস যায় প্রচুর ভেসেলস ওভারিয়ান থেকে আসে এবং তোমরা জানো ওভারে আটে ডাইরেক্ট এটা অ্যাবডোমেনাল ওয়াটার ব্রাঞ্চ কাজে সেই ক্ষেত্রে আমাদের অ্যানাস্টোমেটিক ভেসেলসটাও কিন্তু অনেক সময় ল্যাগেট করার প্রয়োজন হয় সো উই ক্যান গিভ লিগেচার টু দ্য বায়োলেটাল ইউট্রান আর্টারি উই ক্যান গিভ লিগেচার টু দ্য অ্যানাস্টোমেটিক ভেসেলস উইথ দ্য ইউট্রান আর্টারি অ্যান্ড দ্য ওভারিয়ান আর্টারি অ্যান্ড উই ক্যান গিভ দ্য লিগেচার মোর লেটারালি দ্যাট ইজ ইউট্রান আর্টারি ইজ দ্য ব্রাঞ্চ অফ দ্য অ্যান্টিরিয়ার ডিভিশন অফ দ্য ইন্টারনাল এরিয়া কার্টারি সো ইন্টারনাল এরিয়া কার্টারি তার অ্যান্টিরিয়ার ডিভিশন থেকে আসছে আমাদের ইউট্রান আর্টারি কাজে ইউট্রান আর্টারি বাধার পরেও যদি আমাদের এটা ব্লিড করতে থাকে উই ক্যান লাইগেট দ্য অ্যান্টিরিয়ার ডিভিশন অফ দ্য ইন্টারনাল এরিয়া আর্টারি এটাকে বলা হচ্ছে ডি ভাস্কুলারাইজেশান মানে আমরা ভেসেলটাকে কমিয়ে দিচ্ছি এটা আমরা কি কোথায় বলেছি এটাকে আমরা বলবো স্টেপ ফাইভ ডিভিস বিলিঞ্চ হলো আমাদের কনজারভেটিভ সার্জারির মধ্যে বলেছি বা ডি ভিস্কুলারাইজেশান যেটা আসছে স্টেট হলো স্টেপ সিক্সের মধ্যে আমরা বলবো ডি ভাস্কুলারাইজেশান ডি ভাস্কুলারাইজেশান ডেভেলপ কান্ট্রি তো ওরা আরেকটাভাবে করে যেটা হলো এম্বোলাই ভেসেলসগুলোকে এম্বোলাই দিয়ে বন্ধ করে দেয় বাট উই হ্যাভ নট সো ফ্যাসিলিটিস ওরা এনজিওগ্রাম করে নেয় এবং সেখানে আমাদের এম্বোলাই দিয়ে বন্ধ করে নেয় বাট আমাদের সেই ফ্যাসিলিটিস নাই তবে আমরা কিন্তু সার্জারির মধ্যে যে যখন আমরা ওপেন করছি প্রায়শো আমরা কিন্তু ভেরিয়াস টাইপস অফ কম্প্রেস সুচার্স উই আর গিভিং অ্যান্ড মোস্ট কমন ইজ দ্য বিলিঞ্চ অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম উই আর গিভিং লাইক ইট দ্য বায়োলেটাল ইউটোনাটাইলাইজেশান ইট ইস খুবই কমনলি আমরা করে থাকি এটা আমরা দিয়ে দিতে পারি অ্যান্ড লাস্ট যে প্রসিডিওরটা আছে দ্যাট ইজ দ্য হিস্ট্রেকটমি নাথিং টু ডু উই ট্রাই ডর লেভেল ফেস্ট টু সেভ দ্য ইউটোরাস বাট to save the life of the patient we have to sacrifice our uterus it is the last steps so this is all about the atonic atonic uterus ebong amra eta steps gulo jodi prothomei amra boli ektu just recall first time amra bolechi amra ki korbo amra general management korbo jekhane amra fluid dibo ebong fluid replacement and oxytocin drugs step 2 te amra bolechi jeta seta holo je amra you are giving various types of blood products tikla shegla to amra ditei thakchi স্টেপ টুতে আমরা ইউট্রান ম্যাসেস কিন্তু ফার্স্ট স্টেপের মধ্যে পড়ে যাবে ঠিক আছে ইউট্রান ম্যাসেস কিন্তু আমাদের ফার্স্ট স্টেপের মধ্যে পড়ে যাবে বাট ইন কেস ইস দ্য স্টেপ টুতে আমরা বলেছি এক্সপ্লোরেশন অফ দ্য ইউট্রাস স্টেপ থ্রি বাই ম্যানুয়াল কম্প্রেশন অফ দ্য ইউট্রাস স্টেপ ফোর কন্ডম ক্যাথেটার স্টেপ ফাইভ আমাদের ভেরিয়াস মানে সার্জিক্যাল মেথড সার্জিক্যাল মেথডের মধ্যে স্টেপ ফাইভে আমরা করেছি হলো কম্প্রেশন সুচার এবং স্টেপ সিক্সের মধ্যে আমরা করেছি সেটা হলো ডি ভাস্কুলারাইজেশান অ্যান্ড লাস্ট যেটা আছে সেটা হলো হিস্ট্রেকটমি কাজে এই স্টেপ ওয়াইজ যদি আমরা এটাকে মনে রাখি তাহলে আমাদের এই কোয়েশ্চেনটা অ্যান্সার করতে আর ভুল হওয়ার কথা না এখন আসো ট্রমাটিক পিপিএইচ ট্রমাটিক পিপিএইচ মানে হলো যখন তুমি দেখছ ইউ আর স্টার্টিং দ্য চ্যানেল ইউ আর গিভিং দ্য অক্সিটোসিন অর দিউটোস ইজ ওয়েল কন্ট্রাক্টেড বাট স্টিল দেয়ার ইজ এ ব্লিডিং অলওয়েজ থিঙ্ক অ্যাবাউট দ্য ট্রমা 
ট্রমার ক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু আমরা বলেছি যখন আমরা এক্সপ্লোরেশন স্টেপ 2 তে করেছি তখন কিন্তু আমি এক্সপ্লোরেশন যখন করেছি তখন যে শুধু ইউটারাস এন্ড ক্যাভিটি এক্সপ্লোরেশন করেছি তা কিন্তু নয় আমি কিন্তু জেনিটাল ট্রাক এক্সপ্লোর করেছি কাজেই এই যে এক্সপ্লোরেশনের মধ্যে কিন্তু স্টেপ 2 তেই কিন্তু আমরা এটা কভার করে ফেলেছি কাজেই ইফ देयर ইন এ ট্রমা ইউ উইল জাস্ট ক্লিন আইডেন্টিফাই দা ট্রমা এবং এই ট্রমাগুলো আইডেন্টিফাই করার সময় অনেক সময় দেখা যায় যে পেশেন্ট খুব এক্সজস্টেড থাকে এবং আমরা যদি দেখি যে বড় কোনো সার্ভাইকাল টিয়ার আছে অথবা ভ্যাজানাল টিয়ার লেসার স্ট্যান্ড এক্সটেনসিভ দিস পেশেন্ট দেন শুড বি ডান আন্ডার জেনারেল এসেশিয়া আদারওয়াইজ ইনএডুকেট তোমার সুচারিং হবে এবং ব্লিডিংটা কিন্তু কন্টিনিউ হতেই থাকতে পারে তো এই ধরনের ট্রমা কখন হতে পারে যদি খুব বিগ বেবি ডেলিভারি হয় অথবা প্রলং লেবার অবস্ট্রাক্টেড লেবার অথবা ইনস্ট্রুমেন্টাল ডেলিভারি এইসব ক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু আমাদের এই ধরনের ট্রমাটা হতে পারে কাজে এই ধরনের একটা ডেলিভারি যেমন একটা ডিফিকাল্ট লেবার হয়েছে তখন কিন্তু কোনো ট্রমা আছে কি না এটা আমাদের ভালো করে একটু চেক করতে হবে তাহলে উই হ্যাভ অলরেডি কমপ্লিটেড টিস্যু কমপ্লিট করে ফেলেছি করে ফেলেছি আর কোয়াগুলেশন কোয়াগুলেশন তো বলেছে ব্লাড অ্যান্ড ব্লাড প্রোডাক্টের মধ্যে আমরা উই ক্যান গিভ দ্য ট্রান এক্সামিক এসিড উই ক্যান উই আর গিভিং দ্য ব্লাড অ্যান্ড দ্য ফ্রেশ ব্লাড কন্টেনিং দ্য প্লাটিলেটস অ্যান্ড দ্য কোয়াগুলেশন ফ্র্যাকচার বাট চার ব্যাগ দেওয়ার পরেও যখন আমরা দেখব যে আমাদের ব্লিডিং হচ্ছে দেন উইল নট গিভ দ্য হোল ব্লাড দেন উইল গিভ দ্য ফ্রেশ ফ্রোজেন প্লাজমা অর ক্রায়োপ্রেসিপিটেড ঠিক আছে অর ফিফ্টিনোসেন টু রেজ দ্য কোয়াগুলেশন লেভেল লাস্ট জাস্ট ওয়ান মিনিট regarding the secondary postpartum hemorrhage the incidence is very low only 1 to 2 percent so we will uh, secondary pps to hoche mainly due to infection if there is a chance of retain beats or there is a sepsis then there may be chance of the secondary postpartum hemorrhage so retain placental beat purpura sepsis uterine uh, uterine anomalies just like কন্টেনিং সাম ফাইব্রয়েড অর আর্টারিও ভেনাস ফিস্টুলা সেই সব জায়গাগুলোতে যেখানে আমাদের ইনস্ট্রুমেন্টাল ডেলিভারি হয়েছিল অথবা কোরিও অ্যামনেনাইটিস হয়েছিল এই ধরনের পেশেন্টের ক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু আমাদের সেকেন্ডারি পোস্টপার্টাম হেমোরেজ হতে পারে এবং সেকেন্ডারি পোস্টপার্টাম হেমোরেজ যখন হবে ভলিউম রিপ্লেসমেন্ট এটা তো থাকবেই তার সাথে আমাদের যেটা থাকবে ইউটোট্রনিক ড্রাগস অ্যান্ড খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট যেটা হলো সোয়াপ কালেকশান for the culture and sensitivity and you should start the antibiotic triple regimen AGM ampicillin gentamicin and metronidazole so I'm ready to give the apology the amateur blood it a PPS to bond to a jet on it of hello our only show that has a duty to do written placenta take talk on amra ultrasonography by take it to put it in bits to the page I tell you should take explore put the party কিন্তু এক্সপ্লোর করতে গিয়ে সেকেন্ডারি পি পেয়েছে হাত দেওয়ার সঙ্গে সঙ্গে দেখা যাচ্ছে যে ইউটাস পারফোরেশন হয়ে যায় ইঞ্জুরি হয়ে যাচ্ছে অথবা এত ব্লিড করে মোস্ট অফ দ্য টাইমস দে রিকোয়ার্ড দ্য হিস্টিক টুমি অলসো সো সেকেন্ডারি পি পিএস ইজ ভেরি ব্যাড থিং এবং ডিউ টু দ্য ইনক্রিজ রেট অফ দ্য সিজারিয়ান সেকশান সেকেন্ডারি পোস্টপার্টাম হেমোরেজও কিন্তু অনেক বেড়ে গেছে এবং সেই সব ক্ষেত্রে আমাদের আসলে আমি আমরা সেকেন্ডারি পি পিএসটা নিয়ে একটু ভয়ই পাই তাহলে সেকেন্ডারি পিপিএইচের কথা হলো আমাদের ম্যানেজমেন্টের প্রোটোকল মধ্যে হলো যে উই শুড স্টার্ট ভলিউম রিপ্লেসমেন্ট অক্সিটোসিক ড্রাগস কন্ট্রোল দ্য ইনফেকশান ইফ দেয়ার এনি টিস্যু রিমুভ দ্য টিস্যু অ্যান্ড ফাইনালি ইস দেয়ার ইজ এ এক্সেসিভ ব্লিডিং দেয়ার ইজ এ চান্স অফ হিস্টে টু মি ইজ মোর আই থিঙ্ক টুডে অল অ্যাবাউট দ্য পোস্টপার্টাম হেমোরেজ ইটস এ বিগ চ্যাপ্টার উই হ্যাভ টু কাভার ইট উইদিন ওয়ান আওয়ার বাট আই ট্রাই টু এক্সপ্লেন ইট ভেরি ক্লিয়ারলি অ্যান্ড ইভ ভেরি ইন সেগমেন্ট একটা কথা বলতে চাচ্ছি ক্লাসের শেষে আমি তোমাদেরকে কতগুলা স্লাইড দিব এর মাঝখানে অ্যাড করব সেটা হলো বিশেষ করে ভলিউম রিপ্লেসমেন্টটা করার সময় আমরা কতটুকু ভলিউম দিব এটা একটা অক্সিটোসিক ড্রাগস আমরা কতটুকু দিব হাইস্ট কতটুকু সেটুকু দিব আর কজও পোস্টপার্টাম হেমোরেজের আমরা কয়েকটা কয়েকটা তোমাদের ডাট মানে চার্ট বা ভিউ দিব যেটা আমি এটার সাথে পরে অ্যাড করে দিব তোমরা একটু কাইন্ডলি দেখে নেবে যদি কোনো কোয়েশ্চেন থাকে বা কোনো জায়গাটা ক্লিয়ার না হয় প্লিজ জাস্ট রাইট ইন দ্য কমেন্ট বক্স আই উইল অ্যান্সার দিট সো নেক্সট ক্লাসের জন্য আমরা অপেক্ষা করব আর এই সময় আমরা ভালো থাকি সবাই সুস্থ থাকি আল্লাহ আমাদেরকে নিরাপদে রাখুন সবাইকে আল্লাহ হাফেজ